What's going on summoners? My name is Trey. Today, we're going to be diving into episode 7 of our Built Different series. In case you're not familiar with it, we use the series to break down powerful Korean builds with a fun minigame on the side. Be sure to stay tuned so you don't miss out. On your left, you'll see two bars with one indicating risk and the other carry potential. These are color coordinated to help you figure out how useful yet difficult the builds are. Let's not waste any more time and dive right into the video. Starting us off strong, we've got Malphite in the top lane. With so many fighters and the re-emergence of Kennen, it's no shock that Malph is thriving in the top lane. His laning phase is extremely easy to play, and he provides one of the best ultimates in the game. On top of this, Malph is extremely hard to kill later on. His kit naturally makes him an anti-AD menace that can slow attack speed and eat a lot of damage. If you're looking for a tank that makes champions like Jinx cry, look no further than Malphite. Taking a look at his popular Korean build, you'll be taking Teleport and Ignite as your summoner spells. As for your runes, you'll be taking Grasp, Demolish, Second Wind, Unflinching, Presence of Mind, and Last Stand. When it comes to your items, you'll be building Defensive Boots, Divine Sunderer, Thorn Mail, Force of Nature, Titanic Hydra, and Gargoyle Stoneplate. This combination of runes and items are meant to dominate a lot of Malphite's counter matchups and has found great success in Korea. Malphite as a champion is extremely easy to play and offers a laning phase that takes little to no thought. On the rare occasion that you do face a counter, like Mordekaiser or Scion, this build allows you to take initiative and win the lane. With Ignite, you'll have decent kill pressure throughout the laning phase. Just make sure you're playing safe early. Without Flash, you're extremely vulnerable to early ganks and falling too far behind can lose you the game. Moving on to our next pick, we've got Irelia Top. This elegant dancer is well known in the league community for her insane amounts of both mechanics and balance. She's a champion that once mastered can dominate any matchup in the game. That being said, she's really hard to play and can easily put you in a lot of bad situations. If you're willing to take the time to learn her as well as her matchups, then she's one of the best fighters out there. Diving into her build, be sure to take Flash and Teleport as your summoner spells. Your runes will consist of Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Legend Alacrity, Last Stand, Second Wind, and Unflinching. These runes will ensure that you have a lot of fighting power while also keeping you a bit healthy early on. Looking at your items, you'll be building Blade of the Ruined King, Defensive Boots, Heart Steel, Ravenous Hydra, Wit's End, and Death Stance. Irelia may be a difficult champion, but when someone is practiced with her, it shows. Her high skill ceiling allows for crazy outplays and provides her with insane 1v9 potential. Just make sure that you're playing your early game well, or else the game will be really hard for you later on. With this build, you become so hard to kill while still being able to pump out tons of damage. You get a ton of HP, some nice resistances, and a great healing. Before we get to our other Korean builds, here's a quick word from one of our newest course creators, General Sniper. Hey everyone, General Sniper here. If you want to learn how I hit Chandra at age 12 and hit rank 1 multiple times, check out my course on Pro Guides, where you'll also get access to 500 other lessons and boot camps for only $7.99 a month with no commitment. Click the link and check it out at ProGuides.com. Alright, now let's get right back to those builds. Pulling us back into things and into the jungle, we've got Lilia. With the constant cosmic drive changes and the swap to farming junglers, it's no surprise that Lilia is thriving. She's able to quickly clear her camps, secure objectives, and pull off nice ganks. On top of all of this, Lilia becomes a late game monster thanks to her extreme mobility and true damage. If you need an AP option in the jungle, make sure you check her out. Taking a look at her build, you'll be taking Ghost and Smite as your summoner spells. For your runes, you'll be taking Conqueror, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Water Walking, and Celerity. These runes will give you great fighting power and some bonus mobility. Moving on to your items, you'll be building Riftmaker, Lucidity Boots, Cosmic Drive, Demonic Embrace, Dead Man's Plate, and Force of Nature. Lilia has a relatively basic kit that isn't too hard to pilot. That being said, it can still be fairly difficult to land the sweet spot on your W and Q without practice. This is especially true when you're running around with 800 movement speed thanks to her passive, Cosmic Drive, Dead Man's, and Ghost. Once you get practice with her though, she can dominate teamfights and is fairly hard to kill thanks to her hypermobility and tankiness. Moving on to our next jungle pick, we've got a champion that is starting to make a comeback, Udyr. After his rework, Udyr had a huge spike in play rate due to being incredibly overpowered. He was unkillable, dealt tons of damage, and had one of the best clear speeds in the game. While he still has these benefits, he's much weaker now and can actually be punished for his mistakes. If you practice him enough and make good decisions, Udyr can still dominate games with his AoE build. If you want a mix of AP and Fighter, then Udyr is a jungler for you. Diving into his build, you're going to be taking Ghost and Smite as your summoner spells. 
As for your runes, be sure to take Conquer, Triumph, Legend Tenacity, Last Stand, Conditioning, and Unflinching. These runes will give you a nice skirmish power early on, while also giving you great survivability later. When it comes to your items, you'll be building Demonic Embrace, Defensive Boots, Iceborne Gauntlet, Cosmic Drive, Force of Nature, and Deadman's Blade. Udyr can be a bit complicated due to his constant form changes. This means you'll need to have good decision making and practice in order to select the right form at the right time. In exchange, you get to have one of the best clears in the game and are also incredibly hard to invade. On top of this, you can take over games with your damage and sticking power once you get a few items. Taking us into the mid lane, we've got everyone's favorite pro play hyperscaler, Orky. This hybrid damage dealer has always been known for two things, his safe laning and his huge late game damage. While Corky usually swaps between some variation of perma poke builds and auto base builds, it seems Korea has found one they like. Corky is a great option for anyone looking to scale into the late game with high damage, safe landing, and game changing abilities. With his package, you can turn the tides of games within seconds. Moving on to his build, be sure to take flash and teleport as your summoner spells. For your runes, you'll be taking fleet footwork, overheal, alacrity, cut down, magical footwear, and biscuit delivery. These runes will keep you safe early on, so that you can scale into a late game monster. Taking a look at your items, you'll be building Essence Reaver, Sork Shoes, Manamune, Navori Quick Blades, Ludens Tempest, and Void Stuff. While Quirky is a really safe champion, you have to be careful with him in the current meta. Assassins are likely to punish his missteps, so you'll have to position well if you're looking to survive. That being said, besides taking time and gold to scale, this build will turn you into a late game poking machine. You'll take out chunks of enemy HP with your ult, and thanks to Navori, you'll regenerate rockets often. Plus, you have a steady power curve with this build, so you rarely feel like you're on a weak spike or point in the game. Now, before we move on to our final few Korean builds in the video, let's not forget about our favorite pro guides tradition. Today, we want to ask you all, what champion are you excited to see in pro play? Regardless of who it may be, make sure to let us know down in the comment section below. Now, nonetheless, let's dive back into the video. Pulling us back into things with our ADC pick, we've got Ezreal. Soon to be buffed and enjoying his time as a B tier ADC, Ezreal is a pick that will always hover Korean lists. His high skill ceiling alongside his build versatility makes him a powerful pick that many players look to master. While the skill difference between a good and a great Ezreal is astronomical, it doesn't mean you shouldn't play him. With a bit of practice and game sense, anyone can use this champion to climb the ranks. Taking a look at Ezreal's build, you're going to be taking Flash and your choice of Exhaust or Heal. Exhaust is great to deal with Assassins, but sometimes you just need Heal for nice sustain and the movement speed when kiting. As for your runes, be sure to take Conqueror, Presence of Mind, Bloodline, Cutdown, Mana Flow Band, and Transcendence. These runes will give you a lot of skirmish potential, while also giving you some nice stats in the late game. For your items, you'll be building Sheen, then Ravenous Hydra, Lucidity Boots, and then turn that Sheen into Divine Sunderer. After that, grab Monomune, Serelda's Grudge, and your choice of Death Stance for armor, or Maw of Memordius for MR. Keep in mind that with this build, you'll want to rush both Tear and Sheen as quick as possible. It'll give you a nice damage boost and help you stack Muramana quickly. As a champion, Ezreal can be incredibly difficult due to his reliance on skill shots and basic attack weaving. That being said, with decent practice, you can make him work fairly well. His safe laning phase allows him to scale for free, while also letting his support make plays around the map. On top of this, Ezreal scales insanely well and is hard to kill later on due to his great mobility. Oh yeah, and with this build, he also deals quite a bit of AoE damage, so make sure you look to teamfight. Moving on to our support pick, we've got Shen. While he may seem a bit out of place in the bot lane, Shen is a powerful support that shouldn't be underestimated. His kit offers natural peeling tools, and thanks to his Q, he deals tons of damage early on. As the game goes on, Shen becomes a tanky frontline that can play for his team or can sit on his ADC for maximum peel. Overall, if you're looking for a flexible support that can be also played top, look no further than Shen. Diving into his build, you're going to want to take Flash and Ignite as your summoner spells. As for your runes, you'll be taking Guardian, Font of Life, Second Wind, Revitalize, Hextech Flash Traption, and Cosmic Insight. These runes will give Shen additional support ability until he reaches level 6 in his mythic. Speaking of which, you're going to be building Relic Shield, Radiant Virtue, Lucidity Boots, Redemption, Thornmail, and Anathema's Chains. Shen is a powerful champion when in the right hands due to his versatility and amazing kit. That being said, he'll often struggle versus poke or high range bot lanes due to his low range, so be careful. Besides that, he's relatively blindable and can often catch the enemy off guard since they expect him to be top lane. If you're a duo with your jungler, or if you're just a macro player, you can make game-changing plays from across the map with your ultimate. 
Just be sure you don't leave your ADC in a vulnerable position. Before we continue on to the end of the video, climbing can be hard and sometimes you'll need help or someone to play with. If you want to join an amazing community of people like you that love lists, bulk pieces, and other things like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description below. So what are you waiting for? Join us! Last, but certainly not least, we've got yet another powerful combo that has shown a lot of success in Korea. Summoners, let's talk about the insanely strong combo of Talon Jungle and Bard support. While these two champs may not directly interact with each other for a bit in the early game, they both look to do the same things. Talon Jungle is constantly looking for aggressive plays and invades. Bard, on the other hand, looks to roam around the map and get his allies ahead with his mobility and CC. Put them together and you've got a duo that is always looking for plays and making the enemy jungler miserable. Let's start by looking at the talent build. For your summoner spells, you'll be going Ignite and Smite. As for your runes, you'll be taking Conqueror, Triumph, Alacrity, Last Stand, Eyeball Collection, and Treasure Hunter. These runes increase the skirmishing power and give some nice bonus snowball potential. Finally, your items are going to consist of Ravenous Hydra, Lucidity Boots, Eclipse, Black Cleaver, Death Stance, and Surreal's Grudge. Moving on to Bard's build, you're going to be taking Flash and either Ignite or Exhaust as your summoner spells. For your runes, be sure to take Guardian, Font of Life, Conditioning, Revitalize, Zombie Ward, and Relentless Hunter. These runes will give you a nice early game while also boosting your roaming potential so you can keep up with Talon. When it comes to your items, you'll be building Spell Thiefs, Radiant Virtue, Boots of Swiftness, Redemption, Dead Man's Plate, and Anathema's Chains. This powerful duo is constantly looking to play aggressive and invade the enemy jungler. With even a slight lead, they're able to take control of the game and ensure that the enemy is always down a person. With Bard, they can take creative gank angles and can even pull off flawless turret dives due to his ultimate. This playstyle as a whole can be fairly difficult due to its high pace and high tempo gameplay, and it can often lead to many mistakes. That being said, games in Korea will end as early as 15 minutes when played properly. Take some time to practice this pair, and you'll be speedrunning games as you climb the ranks. Just make sure you communicate with your ADC what the game plan is. You don't really want to leave them on an island to perma-die and give the enemy a way back into the game. And that sums up our video for today. Don't forget to join our ProGuides family at ProGuides.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else, so stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day.